started and then perfect thank you all right good morning everybody uh, welcome to the Electric School Bus Training Project Overview. My name is Larry Riera. I am staff with the California Energy Commission, and I will be one half of the presenters uh, this morning and also want to acknowledge uh, Janet Malig from Cerritos College, who will also be presenting uh, along with me this morning. We are also joined by uh, Janet McKinney. She is the Energy Commission staff and Nicole Sherman, who will also be helping out with this uh, presentation. Uh, if you can, uh, please uh, put your name in your school into the chat. Uh, so we have some familiarity. And then to let you know, we will also be recording this uh, session for posting to the ATL website uh, for those staff people who, who may not be able to attend and want to know uh, a little bit more. So thank you for everybody who's already chatted there their names and their, and their schools in here. Uh, what we'll do this hour is uh, provide a little context for the training program. Uh, since its inception, we will talk specifically about the modules involved in the training uh, and some details. Janet will go through that. And then we'll open it up for some comments and questions, if you will, uh, and some discussion items. Uh, we wanna hear from you. We wanna hear from you, either if you've attended it, if you've attended others, um, if you're interested in attending this, uh, this is a complete 360 where we want to hear from you and then also reflect that into the, uh, into the training program uh, as well. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about, about, uh, about next steps and what we have planned in terms of the Energy Commission, Janet, certainly with her college and all of the colleges uh, throughout the state as we work to help uh, educate uh, the fleet technicians and the, uh, and the bus operators. Janet, do you have any uh, comments or Opening remarks? Yes. First, thank you for those who participated with us uh, in the past. Uh, as Larry mentioned, this is a 360 a continuing process. So we definitely uh, you know, want you guys to share with us your experiences so we can work through this process with everybody. And I see that there are some new ones, so we're excited to have you on. Um, and we'll, you know, some of you have already worked with some of our colleges, so we're excited to see that. So welcome. Uh, and we look forward to this hour of you know, some open dialect uh, and seeing what things look like for all of us. Great, thank you, Janet. Uh, thank you, Jana. Uh, next slide, please. Great, thank you. Um, just as some context, uh, the Energy Commission has a 15 year long uh, program, uh, about 1.2 billion called the Clean Transportation Program, if you're not familiar with it. It is part of this program that funds were identified uh, to train uh, uh, schools on uh, ZEV, uh, ZEV technologies. Uh, the program sunsets at the end of this year, uh, December 2023, uh, and then beginning in January of 2024 uh, will be the new, hopefully, uh, new legislation that provides funding and authority to continue to conduct the program. And, and make uh, so there's no uh, uh, reservations. This program will continue uh, for for several more years. We have dollars and we have the uh, contract available to continue to the clean transportation funding school bus training. Next slide. And then our partnership, uh, Janet, if you want to speak a little bit more about uh, the advanced transportation logistics. Yeah, the advanced transportation logistics. You know we're. Uh, funded originally by the California Community College System. It was really to build the green economy. And for for a lot of people, we've been in this business for, I don't know, over 20 years. So we've gone with the technology. We work very closely with the Energy Commission. Uh, and, you know, we, ATL, works with all 115, actually 116 community colleges now in the system. You know, our expertise comes in transportation, whether it be working to identify skill gaps or if it's directly at a college and, and you guys are potentially recruiting for employees or future employees from our automotive or heavy duty programs. So a lot of our uh, instructors come from industry and have the skill set to be able to work through that and are always eager to work with industry to help build a new workforce today and tomorrow. So I want to like make sure you guys know who we are, uh, what's available to you and why we do what we do. So yes, next slide please. 
a real quick uh, overview of the training program is uh, the whole idea is to provide uh, the skill sets and the training to support uh, fleet technicians. Uh, it is also to support uh, the operators, the bus operators as well. Uh, this schools uh, is uh, this training is a companion to our school bus replacement program. Uh, we provided the funding for both the buses and for the chargers. This training program is is a companion uh, to help support it. Um, Cerritos College, as I had mentioned, is the administrator for this project. Uh, it's a million dollar agreement between our agencies. Uh, and then it ends uh, in 2024. We do have recommendations uh, and next steps in mind, which I'll talk a little bit about uh, towards the end of the presentation, but this will be continuing for, uh, for more years to come. Uh, the curricula was developed by Cerritos College uh, with the California Transit Training Consortium. If you're not familiar with that, uh, we'll put that into the chat. Uh, we also work with the bus and the charger OEMs uh, so both of these uh, were project partners in the development of the uh, of that criteria. Some of it was proprietary, some of it was in the middle, some of it was not proprietary. I just want to kind of get that off the top in case there's any questions about uh, kind of the source of the training material. And then we're we're using the network of community colleges to provide the training to uh, to the schools. Next slide. Now we'll get into the overview of the training modules themselves and the courses. We'll talk about the delivery, uh, the, the hours, and then what's covered under these, uh, these separate modules. Next slide. Uh, so there are currently four modules uh, that have been developed and you'll see the number of, of uh, online and in-person hours for those respective modules. Uh, and we'll go in a little bit more detail uh, following this slide on what each one of those modules contains. I would note that there's two that are in development. Uh, uh, one of them is, of course, related to the bus operators uh, uh, that is still in development. Another one's a communications one. Mm -hmm. uh, with respect to the training, yeah, the school will uh, complete an intake form, provide some basic information to Jan and her team uh, to identify uh, what you have, what you've bought, uh, who the contact is, uh, the bus and the uh, charger OE, um, OEMs, uh, and then some things about the, the workforce and the, the preference on your training availability. Uh, this is in school. We'll do it at your school if you have the, if you have the buses, the assets. Uh, and then we can also work with uh, coordinating a training at the colleges. Schools typically like to have it in their own shop so they can see uh, what tools and access and safety equipment is either there or missing. Uh, and then they feel comfortable working specifically on the bus that they're uh, responsible for keeping in service. Uh, we provide a little bit of support for that training, depending on where it's at. And then we also, I want to draw your attention to this frequent, frequently asked questions. Uh, this is going to be located on the ATL website. The whole point is we take school fleet uh, feedback, OEM feedback, and use that transparently to help out um, uh, to help folks out deal with their uh, specific issues uh, related to uh, to the service of the of the buses. Did I miss anything, Janet? Anything here? Okay, great. Next slide. All right, Janet. Thank you. Great. So module one. I think some of you guys may have already taken this or we've been to your location. Uh, as you know, high voltage safety and familiarization is really big. Uh, we talked about high voltage dangers. PPE equipment, kind of the bus systems itself, and, and the safety pieces that are related specifically to the bus that you guys have, and then how to safety safe down or you know uh, shut the bus down if, if there's any issues related to that. So this is a four-hour course that we have, and I and I'm eager to hear for some of you guys that have already done it with us. Um, we've gotten some feedback from our faculty, so we feel that this is the most important class for you to take early on to be able to feel much more comfortable with the vehicle that you have or the bus that you guys have. Next slide. All right, module two is kind of a heavy duty electrical. As we all know, these are electric buses. So we, we wanna make sure that all of you guys feel comfortable with the equipment that you guys are using, or what diagnostics may be there, kind of the relationships and, and even the systems of, of what 
it consists of with the, an electric bus. Uh, a lot of you guys have told us and given us a lot of feedback. So we wanted to make sure that we included this course readily available for you guys, uh, both in person and an online piece that's gonna come. So that, that uh, first electrical course. Next one. Uh, Second one, oh, super important to understand how the batteries, how the control system, and the communications, general communication pieces that come with that, kind of the sensor technology and the transistors. Uh, this is just a, a more advanced electrical course that way you guys feel much more comfortable and more robust with, you know, something that's a heavier duty uh, vehicle and higher charging system in terms of, you know, electric bus in comparison to a regular light duty vehicle that we have. Module three. Here we go. So this is really communication between the charger and the vehicle. We want you guys to be able to know the difference between, is it really the bus or could it be the charger? At what uh, charging systems are available? At what levels does that come in? What does that look like for what you guys have in, internally or at your location? I'm looking at that. Uh, we use, a, I'll be very honest, we use oscilloscope, we use a fluke. We are, you know, we want you guys to have hands on and really know the difference. We ran this course a few times. So just know that as we work with you guys on this, you know, if there's some tweaks that have to happen, we want your feedback with that because this is all about making sure that you guys are, are getting what you guys need and are comfortable with the way it's being communicated with all of you. Module five, these are the two. Uh, super important, the, the CAN communication that you guys know uh, is in the course that's in development, but we do want feedback from all of you. So as we go through the courses, you'll be able to provide us with some feedback and what that looks like. Uh, we have a general course already, but we definitely want feedback on that. And then module six is with oper operator familiarization. Just a review, uh, so everybody understands, you know, things about how the bus operates, how you use it, and these are mostly for, you know, the bus operators. So that is uh, module six that we have available. So that's how easy it is. So I guess we have some discussions, questions, and answers. So Larry. By all means, uh, we could kind of do this together. I think uh, for all of you, how many of you guys have received some courses, whether it's through us, OEM, or somebody else in any of these categories? Um, you know, familiarization, very specific OEM training, anything related to infrastructure, or any other training that you think may be of value for us to know and take into consideration that you've seen out there, or even something you think may be missing. It's super critical for us as we work with you guys to develop courses, modify courses, and offer you guys the courses that you have. And then, you know, when we've been out there training, uh, it's been different, different school districts have different availability. And as Larry mentioned, the first course is about safety. So a lot of that is when, when are you guys available? What do you guys see? Is it the summertime? Are you guys flexible? Because for a lot of these courses, um, we want to make sure that we're meeting your schedule and your availability. And then I'd love to share about all the electric school bus. I see already in the chat box that there have been some that have taken some basic training. So I'd love to hear what that looks like for, from you guys uh, in this open dialogue. Next slide. Oops. There we go. Oops. Uh, let's, let's go. go, back. Let's let's go, go. Back. Let's go back one slide, uh, if we could, <clears throat> Jenna, to this one. And let me, what we'll do now is uh, we'll open it up for questions, responses, but we also want to hear from you uh, about um, either the training you've received or the training you have not received uh, and some of those experiences that Janet and I should be aware of. This is a forum for all of you uh, to engage and to learn this sort of peer-to-peer -peer learning, if you will, about uh, training in this space. And I'm also interested in hearing the problems. Uh, let's really care about any of the risks or the problems that you guys have encountered and, and potential pathways on, on solutions or how you've handled those. It doesn't matter whether it's technical or non-technical or process-oriented. We are also interested in hearing your feedback to the, um, the, the modules that Janet had presented here. Um, a little bit, so we're we're more than happy to to step through those again with a little more detail. What we'll do is we'll open it up, and you're more than welcome to either raise your hand um, or to uh, use the phone if you're on the phone. I noticed some folks are on the phone, or to go ahead and chat your questions uh, your questions into the chat. Thank you.
And Janet, it looks like we have uh, someone who has gone through the basic training at Lion. I went through that too. I, I, I can't say there was any sort of rigor or depth to it, but maybe that's changed. And I think, uh, Luke, you had asked that question. You're more than welcome to kind of share in that space. And then Jay looks like he notes that they have not received any training, but they do have uh, Green Power and Bluebird uh, buses. And then Luke also notes issues with regards to hot or cold weather. Can you share any experiences on that, uh, either addressing the curricula or, or uh, to Luke's specific questions, Janet? Um, yeah, I think you guys are gonna be part of this. So if you haven't received the training, you know, after this, we wanna hear back from you. We wanna be able to come out and look at the vehicle or look at the bus and provide you. I, we believe that, you know, some of the training that is in regards to safety and familiarization and things like that are super critical for you guys. And I think you'll also be able to see lessons learned and please, by all means, we want you to feel comfortable enough with the equipment that you guys have because we realize as, as I'll give you an example, you know, we had gone to a couple of school districts and, and some had said, we have no PPE equipment. We don't even know what to buy. We don't know what diagnostics. And I think those are super critical for all of you guys that are taking, that are purchasing these buses to understand what are the things that you guys need and critical that we design and develop and be able to share that with everybody to know that you're getting those kinds of pieces. And yes, I, I can understand that, that Larry had mentioned there's some proprietary information. And I think this is also pretty critical that we want a training that anyone can use. I think the OEMs at some point are gonna have some very specific OEM pieces that they want. But then there are also a lot of things before that, that we believe that, that you guys want to learn and want to know. And if we could design that with you, if we haven't already provided it, then we want to be able to do that. So I saw that on there, we need to know what PPE is required. So yeah, when we come out to your location, we actually bring out the PPE equipment. We share with you what that is, you know, even where to buy it, if you're not sure where to get it and how to use it and what's kind of critical with what that looks like. Um, yeah, and, and I keep seeing that lack of training from the manufacturer. I, I, that seems to be the same thing we hear from everybody. So I think if we can come up with these courses uh, with you guys, it, you guys, Larry, I'm a big, you know, I California, we're first out. So that means we have a, a lot of sharing that we could do. And you guys are so busy trying to figure out routes, how to maintain, how to do all these things that it is super critical that we hear back from you guys uh, at what things look like. And then I think, you know, when you're having issues with battery and those things, we want to know, are, are those coming through as a service bulletin? And they're telling me you can't, you can't use the bus. How does that come through to you guys so that we have a better understanding uh, of the issues that are coming through? So yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks yeah. Janet. I, I did want to note in the chat, which I, I don't think I've seen before, this is one school with two different types of electric buses. And so I, 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 with this training you'll be going through here with, uh, with uh, ATL and Janet, you'll be, you'll be able to handle and address issues across the OEM portfolio, uh, regardless of the product. It will help you with uh, skills development. But you'll be able to maintain a higher level of confidence because you do have uh, an underground pinning. And certainly if you're interested in OEM proprietary training, you're more than welcome to kind of continue down that road if they if they offer that, whether it's the vehicle or the uh, or the charger. Thank you for that comment. I saw that I see that that came up uh, in the, I don't know, 20 or 30 trainings that we've already done where they need to know the size of chargers and what has to be done to our facility to be able to accommodate that. Uh, we we talked about some of that on the EVSE infrastructure, not in detail because that's not our expertise, but we will tell you some, con some concerns or issues to be aware of um, as you guys are in a shop and you're bringing different types of vehicles into a location uh, that they take into consideration, but that's definitely a good one. Uh, so just what you see to know. <laughs> There's a question on coolant and compressors. Janet, I think you, yeah, I don't think you have one of the modules, but let me double be sure. We do not have that. Okay. Uh, and I think what happens 
with that is because it's a closed system, uh, it, it'll be, uh, I'm assuming that that's what you mean in the closed system that they have, or is it on the AC system? We do not have that course. We have not developed that because this is my, to be honest, this is my first time to hear that. So very interesting um, to see that that probably have to have a call with you uh, and your team. And is others having the same issue as what Marco had put on the in the chat box? Uh, Matthew Wilson notes, we would also like to know what size chargers and what needs to be done to our facility to accommodate all these chargers. So it sounds like, Matthew, you are in the process of considering and perhaps even budgeting uh, uh, the, the refueling infrastructure for the bus. I am so glad you're having this conversation now. It's very it's very it's uh, it's awesome to see the foresight and understanding that there's a lot that goes into the selection, development, and analysis before you even begin to uh, put the charger into the ground. Why do I say it that way? I say it that way because it's it's not just a refueling infrastructure. You have to understand that um, you know the way charging electric vehicle charging is going on. There's a lot of advanced technologies. There's some fiscal components. There's certainly service components and how you lay out uh, your charging with respect to the rest of your yard or your shop. But all these things are dimensions that you need to incorporate into, into the sizing of the charger and what fits you today uh, in terms of the fleet you have. But what does your growth look like uh, as well? How many more are you going to be adding to, uh, to your school bus uh, fleet? Uh, so let's Put that on the side. Certainly, if you have more you'd like to go into, you're more than welcome to, to raise your hand and speak up. But uh, we can get into that space and I'll provide you some resources on, uh, on going through the planning stage for, uh, for chargers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very interested on the battery failure. Uh, one of the things uh, that has come up with us uh, and I, is in the way that it's charging? Is it overcharging? Is it having something? And then we want to be able to know that we've gone, you guys have gone through this cycle and been able to share with the OEM the conversation. Like I, I, I've done this, I've done everything you guys have asked, and I'm still having this battery failure. We have a lot of experience because we've worked historically on the transit side and have seen some of those issues. So we want to make sure that that you guys get the right and proper training so you guys can have that conversation. Because I I can't tell what conversations you guys are having with the OEM any time a failure comes in. Is it on a call? They're telling you to connect back and, and receiving the information. But, you know, how does the communication coming back and forth between you and the OEM every time you guys have an issue? I think that's even more critical for myself uh, as a trainer and us working uh, with our colleges to be able to service you guys. Yeah, Janet, there's a question on here I want to kind of tee up uh, constant issues with regards to hot uh, or cold weather. So that's an environmental factor. I also want to add to that uh, the uh, geomatics. So what the topography and terrain look like as well, that certainly has a, a draw on the, um, on the battery and uh, the duty cycle uh, for the runs. One of the things we've heard is, uh, you know, it doesn't last. Uh, we're run out of charge. Um, um, and so you have to go back to how uh, the planning, the sizing of both the bus and the charger on board uh, and then the offboard charger as well uh, handles your runs. Uh, were they designed not just for the mileage, but for the terrain and for the weather as well? And those are factors, critical factors in the selection of, of the bus going forward and, and don't underestimate it. The runs need, the analysis needs to be done on the specific routes in its total. Uh, that means in terms of the weather, in terms of the geography and the terrain and, 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 and the number of stops and things like that, a complete assessment of, of what that is because one run on a bus may not work for another. And so it's really, you'll, you'll be, you'll be um, on the short side of that that experience and, and just be uh, frustrated by it. So you have to understand those technical limits uh, in terms of its operation, but also to, the, to the, the module that Janet is working on, bus familiarization. For medium and heavy duty technologies, which is different than light duty, the use of um, 
of, of the eco driving the behavior in terms of the regeneration is critical. And if you don't understand how to use regenerative braking um, uh, and, and take advantage of its full capabilities, um, um, you know, you're missing out on, on, on duration and length and, and some other things that are built into this particular technology. So that's why we're setting up a separate module uh, to handle that. Janet, yeah. you have any comments? Yeah. No, so that brings me to when you guys got received these buses, is there training that you guys have received? Because like Larry said, we're putting one for bus, bus operation. Did they tell you about regenerative braking? Did they tell you some key elements of how your bus operator should be doing that? Because you're right. When they come in, if it's charging at only 86%, um, we know that there's, we have a couple ideas of, of why that might be happening. But at the same time, to trying to maximize in the terrain that you're going or something as in, did you cool the bus? Or did you heat the bus before you left it? Or is the operator hitting the, the cold and hot button at the time, only at the time when they're leaving the depot or leaving the shop? Those are kinds of things we want. We, we want to know what you guys are experiencing so that we know we can come up with that answer or suggestions of what that looks like for you guys. And your question, Matthew, on the, uh, the, uh, the percent of charge uh, is addressed in uh, the training module for EVSE and EVSE systems. You'll get to see what that charging profile looks like, the degradation, uh, and things like that. So it will help you to better understand uh, how, you could, uh, how you should be doing your charging practices. All right, let me go back up to the top here. Um, if I could, uh, and since we're on the topic there, Janet, uh, from Jennifer Masterson, she likes the module. Uh, is it the bus or the charger? I'm assuming that's the dilemma. Uh, what is the problem? Is it the bus that's the problem or is it the charger that's the problem? Maybe you can speak to sort of that quick diagnosis of, of source of uh, problem source. Yeah, we addressed it in course number three. Uh, and that's where we'll be able to use um, some of the equipment that you guys have. And or at least I hope you guys have, if you don't have it, then we're going to bring it so that you guys know what to use. Uh, absolutely, there are some pieces um, that we see where um, it's the battery system and the charge that's coming through the correct amount. So uh, we see that happen quite often. So I want you to know that that's covered in the EVSD portion uh, in terms of what we see and also on these pieces. So yeah, you'll see this is exactly the course communication between the vehicle and the charger. We'll be able to use the diagnostic equipment uh, and we're very specific about what those equipments are for you guys to have that. And you'll you'll be able to see this in both the in-person because we really, really want to be able to do in-person and then the backup as the online system for you guys as well. Great, thanks, Janet. I want to give a shout out to uh, Paolo Masali. He's a project manager at MGL. He's put a link to uh, doing some of this uh, route analysis for right sizing. Um, Hi, Larry. Uh, Hi. Oh, please go ahead. Yes. Well, I didn't want to interrupt this conversation, but I just wanted to, um, yes, communicate to you directly. And I think I see Lorraine over the year. We had a conversation with Lorraine last year. Uh, but yeah, so what we do um, at MGL is exactly what you were talking about. So we have a, a software and we also do this at the consulting level that does incorporate um, all those factors that you listed, which are really, really important for extracting a real world fuel economy for electric school buses and for electric vehicles in general. Um, so yes, so we we are uh, sympathetic to all the um, uh, struggles that uh, school districts are going through to figure out what's the right equipment and what's the right size of chargers and the vehicle batteries for sure. Great, thanks, Paula. I would love to partner with you, uh, kind of going forward as we develop the training and the curricula, so uh, schools receive the benefit of all of this wonderful education and training. Thank I you. will I will share my email with you directly. Thank you, thank you. Sure, thanks for the opportunity to um, to talk and uh, and thanks for organizing this 
uh, conversations, those are really important. And, uh, you know, we also learn a lot. Good, excellent, excellent. Thanks. So I, I do want to ask, because I think there are some that may have already taken at least a familiarization with us. Um, if there's any feedback that you guys have for us uh, for that particular course, uh, we would love to hear that. And I'm trying to think if I'm looking to see who may have been on here uh, that may have taken something from us already. Uh, if we're still on here, let's see. Joe, Tony, Tony Bristol, Montebello, I think you've taken something with us. Love to see if you could put something in the chat box about the high voltage course that you guys took from. Uh, one of our instructors already. Uh, Joe Martinez Savannah, I think you probably as well have uh, taken a couple of those with us, at least the familiarization that we've had. I think uh, we're looking for feedback if there's anything else that you'd like us to include in that, um, uh, or if it's, you know, you want to have a separate conversation with me um, with that, we'd love to hear that. I think one of the questions that came up was like, they didn't even know PPE. Is that something that you saw beneficial or you already had that um, that was available or before we even came in? Um, nothing? All right. <laughs> I might just have to ask you guys later on a separate conversation. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Jenna. Maybe we can move to some of these framing questions we had here, uh, not just about when you receive, but when when is the good window for this training? Well, that's one of the things we've we've gone back and forth on, and uh, provide a little context. You know, we kicked off this school bus training in uh, 2019. Uh, you know, the pandemic hit in 2020, but we we did not stop listening. Uh, to the schools. The schools still had a need uh, for the school bus training. This was at the very early stage of, of deployment. So one of the things we did was an online uh, application for training to assess, excuse me, assess basic skills and some other fundamental skills with respect to uh, electrical and things like that. It's very illuminating. And some of that feedback uh, uh, help to drive our, our training and how we go about training and what we cover in terms of the, 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 the module content and things like that. Uh, but that was very informative and we want to continue uh, to go down. But, but the window for training, if maybe you can let us or share with us uh, what are good windows for, for you and your school. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat box. We'd love to have that because we're, we're in the process of scheduling, you know, uh, and also the ability for some of these courses to also be done at, at your local community college. We would love the opportunity for you guys to have to do that, especially when it comes to electrical and to take the pieces that we have. Summer time. Thank you. It's looking like more like summer, summer. That, sort of, <laughs> that sort of time when, uh, when schools might be out. Uh, for those schools that are year round, we might wanna hear if there's some other windows that, that suit you. Uh, as well. And sometimes there might just be brush up courses, some familiarization on some of the previous training or questions you might have. Um, I will point you to the direction of our frequently, frequently asked questions uh, in the, at the ATL website so you can continue to get your, your learnings going on there. And we heard of Saturdays. Well, Saturday, I know we've done a couple of Saturdays already. So happy to see that Saturday may be an option. And I think the other is a thumbs up ish or thumbs down if you don't if you don't have a bus but you're interested in the training or if uh, you're interested in attending at a at a community college a regional or local community college mm -hmm. for the training uh, versus at your school those that's an option as well. If you have a community college you work with or close by, you know, please put put that community college that you're interested in working with. Uh, so I could reach out to them because we've been doing a lot of uh, training with them. So it's a good opportunity. That way you don't have to travel far or if your you know, facility is not available or if we have a little more advanced courses that we know for sure you're not going to necessarily have all of the equipment. Uh, we want to make sure that you can take it out of community college. 
And certainly looking at a regional approach. So if, there, if one school can host a couple of schools, uh, if they have the capacity in the room and certainly the, the, the buses to, to do the training, uh, that's an option if you want to do it with your neighbor. Uh, again, supporting peer-to-peer -peer learning questions, dealing with, with problems uh, is very helpful when your neighbor's down the street. My term down the street. Thank you for those colleges. Yes, we work with them. Uh, what I've done is I've reached out to some of these colleges and asked for the faculty if they're interested in participating. So let me just tell you, uh, since you guys have put it on there, I will specifically say this particular district has asked for your assistance. Um, would love to have that. And I'm sure if uh, they hear that, uh, they'll be interested in, in offering it at, at their college or coming out here with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of these colleges, if, if you already work with somebody, it, it's also a good opportunity for you to reach out to them and say, hey, listen, we're looking at this school bus, this program, uh, reach out to Janet. I will tell you, almost every single faculty in the state knows me um, because it's ACL. We've done a lot of programs for them. Uh, we've supported them a lot. So don't be afraid to ask them. Um, and say, you know, I want you to reach out. I want you to call Janet and I want, you know, we'd like you guys to take this program on so you can support us. It always works when, you know, everyone is on board and, and wants to show this. And plus they could use it for their own college in here. I'll just tell you that. Now, let me throw out now, I'll say it again when we talk about next steps here, but the training was originally designed for um, the schools that receive California Energy Commission funding for the buses. The program uh, is and will uh, specifically and legally articulate training for any California high school that has a zero emission bus, school bus, if you will. Uh, not light duty vehicles or anything. These are these are to in service to carry uh, to carry uh, school students. Um, this training would be available to. So I, I, along those lines, we were also curious to hear if, if you received non-CEC funding. So that could be CARB, California Air Resources Board funding for school buses, or even the recently announced uh, EPA uh, clean school bus. I know they only announced their uh, rebates, but if you are part of that program, we're certainly interested in hearing from you as well. Mm -hmm. And I will also say if, you know, a lot of you guys from school districts, you all kind of work with each other. If you know that there's another school district that is not on this call, you know, we want to make sure that you you inform them that this training is available. I think the the more training is available, the more conversations we have on the support system, it, it really works better for us. So it was very interesting as we were developing the courses, you know, where different school districts were at. Some had said, hey, I've had it for five years. I'm getting a new one. And some because I have it brand new for us to be able to look at the bus designed the training for something that was built 10 years ago versus one that's two years and the infrastructure that comes into those pieces is, is a very interesting way of, of being able to communicate with the different school districts in terms of oh you have this bus oh did you experience the same thing another school district has this uh we saw this are you seeing the same thing and that way it works a little bit better to be able to communicate and share the same information and say you know if we don't have it call this school district talk to this person so that you guys can share the same information and it's coming across exactly the same way. So I want to make sure you guys know that we do that as well as support for you guys. The other thing is this training is not static. Uh, while it's been developed uh, on, the, on the current thinking, this industry, just like all the other ZEV sectors and technologies, is is bringing online lots of advanced features and 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 uh, other dimensions, if you will, technical dimensions that um, will require the new quote fleet operator, uh, fleet technician, to 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 be aware of those changes and to be to be up on them as well as they service their uh, their fleet. So, kind of brushing up, getting more training in outside of this particular venue uh, and this venue will be uh, will be important to uh, to fleet success. Uh, in your schools.
All right, I'm not too sure, but Jana, I, if anybody's on the phone, I wanted to, I thought there were a few people on the phone. So you just do a check if there's anybody there that might have a comment on the phone. Okay, just like that, nothing on the phone. Uh, I will also reiterate that this is being recorded and will be posted to the ATL website. So you're more than welcome to share the link and we encourage you uh, for those either schools or technicians or anybody that was not able to attend. Uh, they can get more information. Okay. Is there anything else that we may have been missing or um, do you feel that I'm missing any modules uh, that you think needs to be included? Love to hear that. Um, you know, because like Larry said, this is kind of fluid as we develop that, you know, this was we came up with some courses and as we've been doing the training, we've decided to add a few more or change the curriculum that we have uh, to include other things that we found as we went out and started doing the training. So please in the chat box, if there's anything else you guys feel that you guys need or are looking for, please let us know. Happy to see what that looks like. Uh, and you know, it could be incorporated in one of these things or absolutely not, it needs to be taken into consideration. So if there is anything, please put in the chat box. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, sorry, Carlos, please. All right, quick question. Yeah. Um, is there any talk about like universal chargers? I know we have, I want to say two or three different types of chargers possibly. I'm not, not to be, uh, I'm not too sure about it, but do you guys have any information on that? Yeah, I don't know how to respond quite frankly, Carlos. I mean, this is really a market phenomenon. Uh, and we're starting to see some acquisitions here on the global stage, uh, certainly the technologies as well, um, where we look to some of the VGI and some of the other features where they're acquiring technologies and M&A, mergers and acquisitions of those companies and technologies in this space. I think we'll see a natural evolution in this space, just like all the other industries, whether it's automotive or non-automotive space. Um, but I don't think we're going to be specifying a a one size fits all standard um, that I think you might be referring to. And let me know if I'm off. Yeah, no, that that's <clears throat> more or less what, what, what I'm curious. Cause I mean, if, if you know, if schools are uh, looking into buying EV uh, buses, um, I don't, I'm, I question if they're gonna be different, I'm, I'm guessing they're gonna be different models, different brands and they're probably going to come with different chargers. Yeah, I, I, one of the things I have not seen, and I've seen a little bit on the transit, but something you might want to keep an eye on is exactly what's happening in the, in the transit space right now. The innovative clean transit rule by CARB sort of was the first uh, uh, regulation in this space. And so we're starting to see considerable investments in the market sort of truing up to to the needs of the transit to meet their uh, their performance and so as a school you can kind of follow that trend a little bit and see how it's going with respect to the vehicles the training the chargers um, uh, so you can kind of get an idea of what might be lying ahead those companies and those uh, that stakeholder complex is is going through uh, the very stuff you're talking about right now so okay and and i apologize it's like i i, I keep getting a lot of interruptions, but um, real quick, as, as far as uh, getting some decent training for ourselves, I mean, we're, we're like a, almost a self-sufficient school. We're very small. We try to, take, you know, it's like all hands on deck for each, every person here. But uh, um, if we're trying to get, you know, the best of the best training, uh, you guys would, uh, recommend going with uh, the community colleges to try to get 
some support from them or do you guys have anything in particular that you would recommend? Yeah, Jana, would you mind sort of addressing the question in terms of career pathway and increased learning uh, and training uh, to increase uh, you know, staff knowledge as they treat these, uh, treat these buses? Yeah, I think, okay, so as the EV space change, evolution changes, I think, you know, you guys have seen it in the light duty, so now here we are in the medium duty space. Um, I, I'll just be honest, I'm a little biased to the community colleges because a lot of our programs have opportunities or already do training with the OEM, right? So that means we, we have access or we know what's coming or we already see it or they're already doing training. Because I think, Carlos, you, you had asked me about, you know, do you work with Cypress? Uh, I think you, that means you're very familiar with the program. You see what they have and the capacity that they have to add or to build and to do those kinds of things. I will tell you from what has happened and what we've gone through, particular in this space, there isn't a lot. There's about, there's not a lot available, if, if anything, except for the general training that the OEM has. And so also part of that becomes as we move to the changes and the evolution of this, this also means consistently changing uh, the training that you're gonna come up with. You, you want to build competency and be strong at, at, at the communication piece with your OEM, but at the same time too, we realize that, that there is going to be a need to fill positions and to do that. And we want, we believe, and at least I believe that the best opportunity is to do that with someone who has training already readily available and that you can help them with identifying where those little skills gaps are. Because I do believe that the community, because we have to change our courses every year or every couple of years, right? That's a requirement for us. And I think that's where the strength comes in because we have a lot of the OEM, whether it's a light duty and medium or a heavy duty program. So even if, if Cypress does not have a heavy duty program, that doesn't mean I couldn't go to another college that has a heavy duty program. It's exactly in this dev space already doing something and has an OEM relationship. So we have the capacity to ask those questions. I hope that's what I, I hope that answers your question, Carlos, in terms of, of why why I see this. And it's historically I come from the OEM side. So I know what training has and, and what's available and, and what we could do. This particular market is changing constantly. Like literally when I went to a school district that had their bus from three years and I look at a bus that comes in today, it's different. Uh, yeah. even the diagnostics and the way they do it. So I think it's for all of us that here has an opportunity to customize it and design it for us, for, for all of you guys that are in the school district. Because if, yeah, when you get your next bus at six months from now, it's not gonna look like the bus you have today, right? We, we know that as a fact. And, and for a lot of people, you're taking two or three different OEMs. So now it becomes, what do you do with that? But I do believe that, that the training that's available, at least at the levels where we need to be, so you feel confident enough, I think the community colleges can do it for you. You know, there, and you shouldn't have to pay a lot for that, right? Or you shouldn't have to pay for that because it's readily available for you. And Larry didn't say this, but we realize in your school district, you can't send everybody out at the same time. So if there's opportunities to share training and put you guys in the same room with somebody else in another school district, I would love that because that allows you guys also have feedback about, about a bus and they'll say, this is the route that I use, this is what I see, this is what I think is good. And you guys have the opportunity to communicate with each other. And, and we've seen that and have a lot of successes having done that historically in the transit world with the municipal fleet uh, in, in what they have. So, you know, that's, that's my soapbox about what that means. <laughs> And, and I guess the other part was uh, because I, I we go through uh, a third party to also publish sometimes our buses as well. My understanding, because you know Joe's our uh, our main mechanic, and uh, I mean you know thanks to him, otherwise we we pretty much you know be stuck. <laughs> but um, you know the other thing is. Uh, I guess you also probably need some certain equipment to test your buses as well. And I know that we don't have that. I, we have some communication that we use, you know, to communicate with uh, the vendors. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, that's part of my concern is, you know, how, how can we 
work at also, you know, doing some diagnostics, you know, if, if, if it's simple enough to do some right. of lighter repairs. Right. So we will. So if you look at some of these courses, we will show you some of those equipment. We hope that you have them. But if you don't have them, then you're going to see it during the training. You're going to see specifically what is the equipment that we use, why we use it. And we'll actually do the hands-on piece. So you guys will see that. Granted, of course, I, I we don't want to do anything to the bus that could potentially affect your warranty or any of those kinds of things. But we will share that with you during the training. And then if you don't have it, you'll know exactly what model to use, why we use what we have. And then you guys could put it in your budget or, or and see if you guys could purchase it. Because we want you guys to be prepared. And we want you guys to know the difference between what the OEM is giving you guys and what you guys may already have or is a general piece for, a, for an electric vehicle to begin with. Doesn't matter what it is, but that you have the resources and you have the equipment that you guys need. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Carlos. Those were great questions. Um, I wanna pivot real quickly to Matthew's question in the chat. Uh, uh, you know, this is a new industry. There's gonna be new degreed courses, new certificated courses uh, at the colleges. Certainly there'll be others like this particular program uh, where you'll get a certificate of accomplishment or a certificate of participation. That has value in your workplace and that has value in the industry. Uh, I would like to draw attention to kind of the third one, which is I've seen a considerable explosion in training offered by the EV charger OEMs. They have colleges, they have campuses, they have available online information. Some of it is self-paced, some of it is through training, but there are various levels. It's really matured. And so I, I would encourage that as well, if you're interested in sort of that piece, uh, since some of the questions came out there uh, today in that, in that space, uh, looking at the, the charger helps and the ABBs, uh, and some of the other uh, charging companies that provide this. Now, some of the companies offer various levels as well. I just found out that ABB has an advanced and the advanced is not just for service and maintenance, but also for system design. They're bringing you in to see that technology on the back end. And if that's an, an interest you might have, you're certainly just know that these OEMs are providing that level of sort of, of, sort of training. Mm -hmm. Always ask your OEM, ask them constantly. You know what training do you have available? Have you designed something new? Because uh, sometimes I will tell you the person you're talking to isn't always familiar with the training that they may have internally, right? Because there's a there's a engineer working on it that's separate than the one who's designed the training. Um, but yeah, and then okay, so there's a question. Sign up. We'd love to have you guys sign up at your site. Uh, you'll contact me. You'll email, and we could go through that. And pricing. This is free for you guys. Basically, that's why you have this, and this is why this is designed uh, by the Energy Commission to be able for you guys to do this. So, yes, available at no cost. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jana, for posting that that link in there. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, we're coming close to our hour, and I want to talk a little bit about next steps, uh, which will be uh, to complete an intake form. If you're interested in the training, uh, there's a link in the chat uh, that's available to you. Uh, and then also, you know, identifying your schedule and availability, your location uh, for the training. We're gonna the all this information is on the ATL website. We're creating one repository for that. Uh, certainly, if you want to know more on the program side, uh, the clean transportation program, uh, we're also uh, uh, that's also available to you there. And then let me. There's a few more messages that look like they came. Where do we sign up? Uh, oh, I love this question. Janet, <laughs> can you respond to the price for schools to pay uh, for the training? Mm -hmm. Janet, put it on there. It's no cost to you. No cost. Absolutely. This is this is picked up by the Energy Commission uh, to support the schools and the deployment of, of, of the buses. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's no cost to you. In fact, we provide uh, some support services if you're having to travel uh, to make it to, uh, to a regional location, either a college or a high school, to, to receive the training. Mm -hmm. So we support you there. Please take advantage of it. This is a perfect opportunity for you to get the training that you have as well as provide feedback, okay? I think um, as we go through this iteration, there's a hundred, who knows what, <laughs> what will come up with this. Um, I think for you guys to be able to share with each other uh, as districts is pretty critical. 
and, and be able to know that we'll be successful in supporting your purchases and what that looks like. All right, last wrap for questions, comments, thoughts um, before we adjourn. Open it up to anybody for any final remarks, except Janet. <laughs> we'll reserve our stuff. Uh, we do want to thank you for your participation, making some time out of your day to, to attend. Uh, certainly, this will be informative. And know that this is a, this is a village. Uh, certainly, as we looked at all the rest of the schools and getting them to go through this positive experience on training, um, uh, we can all, you can all have success in deploying your technologies. And it's a pleasant experience for the students on the other side as well. All right, I think that's it. Uh, I don't know if we have a last slide or this is the last slide, but we wanna thank you all for your participation today. I wanna thank Jana, Jana, Nicole for helping to support and especially the schools. Thank you for making the time. We look forward to seeing you in a training class. All right, take care everybody. Thank Bye you. now. Bye.